And let's. It's the fifth. Five. Five. June 5th. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. We are live for NFP. We are giving you a free live trading session. It is Friday, June the 5th, 2020. I know many of you wish that we were able to fast forward and jump to 2021 because it seems like the book of Revelation is just exploding and opening up a new crisis every month. Some people say, man, I can't believe we're still in 2020 because this month has lasted for six months. Don't mind if we share this out. I'm going to do so on my own page and then we will get right to it. So give me one second and then we will get started. Analyzing the market today is non-farm payroll day. It is when they report the jobs gained or lost from the previous month, the month of May. Let's see here, watch live right now. All right, so there we go. So good morning to everybody from around the world. I wanna thank you for tuning in. I am the founder and CEO of Global Trading Army, J-Rock, and we are going to look at the news and see what's coming out. We've got 15 minutes before the report's gonna hit and we're gonna see if we can profit off of this and I'll try to explain a little bit of what I see going on. So here's forexfactory.com. You've got Canada employment change coming out and the unemployment rate, they're expected to go to 15% unemployment rate and expected to lose uh, 500,000 or have lost 500,000 jobs from the month of May. U.S. is expected to lose 7.7 7 million jobs for the month of May. The previous month, they lost 20 million in the month of April. And we are close to a total of 40 million jobs lost in the United States over the course of the last three months. The unemployment rate, an astounding 19.4%. This is unbelievable, unprecedented. Now, we're gonna show you the market shaking moves that have taken place in the overnight hours and see where we're headed at this moment. Right now, what I'm seeing is the, make sure that I'm not on it. There we go. So they're saying the unemployment rate is expected to jump to 20% as millions more lost jobs over the last month or so. But you see this line right here, Dow futures jumped 280 points ahead of the May jobs report. <laughs> what is going on? I know you're sitting here wondering saying, how in the heck is it possible that we have continued to lose jobs and the market keeps climbing? It's called an oxymoron or some kind of moron. Why is the market shaking everybody and going up when it should be going down? Why have we not had the rug pulled out from under us? Well, one of the things that you can understand is that who is the biggest winner in all of this? Big business. They have been allowed to stay open during the pandemic. So what we've seen is, and you've heard people talking about it, one of the greatest wealth transfers in the history of the world is the crushing of small businesses, the widening of the gap between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have nots. And then they are pushing division like you wouldn't believe, racial division. They're creating scenarios to divide us further because they know that their time is drawing to a close and they are speeding up as you would say, their plans and purposes to try to break us further apart because united we stand, divided we fall. And so they have continued to push division through the media and through the politicians. And as I've said before, the biggest looters in the world are our government leaders over the decades. They have continued to use their positions of power to enrich themselves and their family and friends by laundering money and yet they put a big noose around our neck or a knee on our throat to try to kill us off and crush us financially. 
But if you learn how to trade, you learn how to read the markets, then you can learn how to capitalize and follow smart money to see what they're doing and follow along with them. You won't always be right, but if you can be right at least six or seven out of 10, then you will be profitable and you follow the rules. You need a good education. You need mentors. You need a team around you. You need people helping you, holding you accountable. Okay, you need patience, discipline, risk management. You've got to learn multiple things. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But the fact is you have to learn how to do it. Well, we believe here at Global Trading Army that we have an environment to help you succeed. All right, now I'm gonna take a quick look before we get going. This is Australia has continued to tick up the Australia index and we are almost at a, we're in a supply zone basically almost at a, a breaking point where a major reversal is likely to come. Will we push and surge higher? Look at this. I mean, straight down and straight up. That's a V-shaped recovery, but we should be close to a reversal and turn back and go the other way. And I've said that over the last several days on my live sessions for my members, that Australia was very close to a turning point. What about the US dollar? It had a drop off and we are printing money like crazy, but it is still the reserve currency of the world. Look at this. The dollar has continued to head south over the last couple of weeks. Will we go further down? It is likely that the dollar will continue to drop off. They're calling for a potential collapse of the US dollar. And if you see over the past five years, we've been pretty stable. So I'm gonna go actually go here. Look at all of the US dollar move this out a little bit. So we're still, even though we're dropping off, we got a lot of room that we can go down. The US dollar can come way down. So we put in a lower high technical term and we are expected to go down. So the dollar is set for much more downside. So we can short the US dollar pairs, leading pairs or buy US dollar pairs where the US dollar is at the back of the currency pair. I'll show you what that means in a second. But that is the US dollar expected to come down and the Australia dollar as well. So who is looking to go up? That's what you have to wonder. Well, let's take a look at the Japanese yen. We also do these on uh, Money Moves Sundays. Take a look at all. So the Japanese yen is on a nice trend slightly up and it is in a pullback. The yen is looking like it's going to curve. Japanese yen is a stable currency don't have a lot of problems in their economy or issues in their country. So this looks like it is gonna turn and head back up. So the yen may be getting ready to go up. All right, what else? Let's look at the British pound index. You know, it has Brexited from the European Union and it is powered through its resistance. So the yen, I mean, sorry, the British pound has more room to go up, okay. Yen and British pound, room to rally. If I go and take a look at the, the whole length of it, look at that. We're coming off the lows, so the British pound has put in higher lows, the third one. So now I'm changing my belief and say, saying that the British pound is going to rally and probably make new highs. That's over the last uh, 12 years. So I'm bullish on the British pound and bearish on the US dollar. Let's jump right to the charts and I'm gonna look at something here. This is the US dollar index. Let me enlarge this. Come out to a weekly time frame. It is plowed through. This is a monster V-shaped recovery. And you say, well, dad gum, how come it's continuing to rise? And we are, if I put a horizontal line right across here in this area, this is a resistance area. And if I zoom in on this, well, back up. You see, I do a resistance here from here to there and then right here. So we got a triple resistance area and then we're gonna come right to where we're at today. One of those things, this is 26,713 roughly general area. And where did we come to today? What is the high that we have had in the last little bit? Well. We're gonna see that the high is right 26,662. 
So we're about 40 pips off of the high. I believe that when the market opens, we'll probably shoot up, hit that resistance, and then we're going to drop off. So I'm expecting another potential sell-off. I don't think we're going to rally hard to break through that point, but we're going to be watching. I'm looking to sell the U.S. dollar index as it pushes up a little bit higher, okay? And we're going to see what these numbers come out, but the thing that they say is buy on rumors, sell on news. So we know the jobs report is going to be bad. We know that jobs have been lost. We know small businesses have been crushed as you have red state versus blue state, Democrat versus Republican. The Republicans want to open. Trump is a Republican. He is the president of the U.S. and he is pushing for the economy to be strong because it makes his legacy look good and it makes things look good. Prior to this what I call coronavirus scamdemic. Yes, people still die. Yes, the virus, you can still catch it. You can also still catch the flu and you can also get hit by a drunk driver in a head-on collision. The fact of the matter is we live to take risks. We take a risk every day we get in our car and drive down the highway. We take a risk, we get out of bed and both of our ankles don't turn sideways and break our legs. Every day is a risk. And so to run and cower in fear is foolishness. You are supposed to get up and go forth and conquer. Be strong and courageous. Don't be bowing down to the system. These people, they are cynical. They are sinister and a very corrupt and wicked people that I believe that they have pushed this simple flu. Yes, it's still very effective and powerful. It's a virus, but they have pushed it to the point of a pandemic when it's not a pandemic. It did not do the damage that they say millions, tens of millions of lives will be lost. Nonsense. I said way back when they were pushing it, saying, pushing the news report early on, CNN and these others saying, six people have died and 200 people have contracted a, a virus out of Wuhan, China. What the heck? This was coordinated. I said, this will come and go and disappear like a fart in the wind, just like all the rest. Why? because that's their game. They'll find something else. When this wears off, they'll find something else. Now we're into racial injustice and police brutality, which is very real. And I will fight for that. I will fight against the authorities that are doing wicked things. Okay. We got about five minutes before we're going to see showtime. Now I'm going to back out here. Let's see. I'm going to put this on the 15 minute time frame. So I got the one minute time frame, five minute, 15 minute down here. I have the EJ. I don't know if y'all have seen this. Just a quick look. EJ has come way off of the bottom. Let me do that real quick and show you the Euro index, EXY. And well, okay. The Euro is also surging. We are right near a top, but it has come off the bottom, but it can continue to surge. So the Euro has got also the same look as the British pound index. So the Euro may continue to surge when trying to sell the top. We're at a double top. When you look at the year right now, that'd be a decent time to sell off for a little pullback, but it could turn and rally and go higher way up here, the Euro index. So when we look at EJ and you say, dad gum, what the heck happened here? Well, we're coming off of a bottom. And you see, when you come off a bottom like this, you can surge. These are the month time frames: one, two, three, four, and then a rest for these two months, and then boop, 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 keep going up. So let's look here on the weekly time frame. We've gone bam all the way up here. Got a little pullback, but be careful. Not necessarily a strong sell point. We may pull back and then explode and go all the way up here. Keep rallying. So you've got to watch each time frame and you have every day is a new day that could give you a different scenario a different take it can change your perspective when you see what the chart is doing the next day and say wow dang i was i was thinking we were at resistance and it plowed through and it's still going well the trend is your friend ride the trend until the end so if it's going to keep going get in for the continuation you missed the reversal and you tried to play a new reversal that didn't happen so you got to get in and ride the wave until it ends. And right now, EJ, I wouldn't get in at the moment. I'll wait for a little pullback and then see if it's going to plow ahead. I think it will. So Euro index looking very strong. Now, 
That means for the Euro US dollar, I'm going to look at this. We got about three minutes till that report comes out. So here's the weekly time frame. Euro USD, same thing. If the US dollar is going to tank and the Euro is going to rally, well, this is also going to go higher coming off the bottom. Are we going to get a little pullback? Yeah, it's possible we get a pullback first and then we plow ahead. We're at 1.13 on the Euro versus the US dollar. That is the short term until the US stabilizes. The US is under a lot of pressure right now with civil national issues and riots that are taking place, trying to quell that. We're in an election year. We've got all kinds of craziness going on. It's like the book of Revelation, like I said, live playing out. All right, less than two minutes. So that's a Euro USD. Whatever you want to play is up to you. And then here we have US versus Canada. You know, Canada is going to report. So here, Euro is in front of the US dollar on this currency. So that's why this I expect to go up because the US dollar should go down. Here, US dollar Canada loony. I'm expecting this to go down because the US dollar is looking to fall. Now, uh, boom. I was expecting a hard bounce off of this level right here. It did not happen. We're sitting on previous support at this very moment on UCAD. Will it break down and plow through? We have closed the gap. You can take a, a position here. I would take this. We're at 134.39. You know, I could say my inclination is to play the bounce reversal off of this support level. This is a daily time frame. We'll back up a little bit. My inclination right now would be to play a bounce and to buy UCAD off of this in expectancy of a bounce. That would be a high prob probability play in my opinion. So, you know, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to say one here and I'm going to do a buy. Look here, man. All right. So I'll do a buy on UCAD and I'm gonna leave that, let that sit. Uh, and I'm actually going to bring that down, bring my stop loss to, uh, wow, it's dropping off. So we just hit, so the US dollar, put my stop loss at 33.70 down here. So I'm seeing the drop off, let's look at, it just hit the US is, US 30 is rallying. Remember I said the uh, peak was at 713. So I'm down a little bit on US CAD. Let's just see if it will have a bounce. I'm expecting a bounce. We're about uh, looking for a sell on. Here we go. We're looking for a sell right now. Boom, right now on U30. May go a little bit higher. We are at 26,700. Let's see that right at that level, 26,700. And UCAD, I'm expecting a turn bounce. So I'm going to average down on that there. And let's just watch this play out. So it rallied all the way to 26,700 and almost 13. Let's see if it goes a little bit higher. It's okay. I may sell it again. 720. I believe that we are going to have, let me check that report, uh, see what the report said. And then I may sell it again. So we came out, come on. All right. So 2 million. Yeah, that's what they expected, 2 million. Okay. So it's gone a little bit higher to 750. <laughs> Selling again. I think that this is a, a stop hunt that they just want to take everybody out before they bring it back down. But let's just wait and see. The higher it goes, the greater the sell opportunity, in my opinion. I do not think it is sustainable. So we're about 70 pips. If it gets to 26,800. Yeah, I think I think this is 
definitely a hard stop hunt. We went from about 26, 580. We've gone about 200 pips straight up. Uh, I think it'll be a hard uh, pullback. So let's just wait and see. And it may come all the way back to 26, 200 by the end of the day. So selling on U30. And then buying UCAD. So a little bullish on the US dollar to have this bounce right here. And actually, I need to call that uh, live. So. Twenty six seven fifty. All right. Let me put this order in real quick. Twenty six seven fifty is where we are roughly at. Twenty six seven fifty. I'm going to go stop loss at nine fifty. I'm going to say. 26 so it's still holding that level just be patient and let it play itself out All right, and let me take a look at the longer time frames to see what is what is it looking like on the longer time frame. See, we're right up in this area, this very strong supply zone at the moment. And momentum will generally take you beyond a certain point. Yeah, you can see where we're at. Looking left to go right. We're right in that area of previous resistance. We plowed back right to that area. So 822. Craziness. 26.858. They are really trying to break some necks on this one. So I've sold it again at 26.858. 860, I think, is where I got it. That is up. 566. So about 570. About 300 pips from the announcement. That is a monster move in a short period of time. And again, you see how the bars are all real small and then on the news announcement, you have a major move. Well, I believe this is still manipulation and that it cannot be sustained. So just be patient. Let's see this play out. A lot of times what they'll do is try to clean everybody out. So they'll send it very far in the other direction to try to take as many people out as possible before they bring it back the other way. Yeah, the thing with the US 30 is <clears throat> they're making up volume that isn't there. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of the things the volume does not uh, support the price movement. 
no. And then they're and then they're saying, oh, it's because we have all these new retail traders buying uh, cash app stocks and Robinhood, and it's like that's total. Even though they did put about ten million dollars into the market in one month, but that's not enough volume no. to sustain a hundred million dollar what no a billion dollar a day market. No, no, thank you. Right, definitely not. the The New York Stock Exchange trades around fifty billion dollars a day. The currency market is five to seven trillion dollars a day. So definitely not. And we're just waiting to see. So it went a little bit, well, quite a bit further than I expected through and things that you have to just take your, take your time, take it easy, do not over leverage when you are trading the market because it is unforgiving. All right. Sorry, guys. I have to drop. All right. Have a great calls. day. Right. Y'all have a good day. You too. Bye, Charlotte. All right. So let's just see if this was the end. If they're going to match out at this level and 27,000 is right around the corner so if they're going to take it higher then and I'm actually going to put a stop loss on this right here at 900 and right here at 900 just to take a couple out and alleviate All right, so it is going higher. Boy, this is a monster move in the market. Unbelievable. So 26, we're at 26, 920. When I say the previous was, yeah, 26, 750. So we got to 26, 920, pure manipulation. I'm gonna look at a different template and see You know, that's why I say it's pure manipulation because here we have half of the states are still not open. Businesses are struggling. We lost 40 million jobs and this is pushing back almost to the high point. This is the all time high of the stock market, 29,400, I believe, or 546. And here we are pushing way back up all the way to these levels. And we're right now, we're beyond the bounds of the Bollinger. So this is absolute manipulation for them to take it this high. I want to take a look at one more thing, the volume and see. All right. And then there's your proof right here. You see this volume bar. Let me just put a line across right there. Look at the size of this candle. The volume is way down here. And then these other candles that you have very small comparatively and their volume is much more significant. Some of these are double. So that's why I say it's pure manipulation that has taken place in pushing it higher. Give me one second. Post one more thing here. So it's still holding on an upward trend, but we are <clears throat> close to a breaking point.
and you see UCAD has still, it came off the bottom, so it is kind of floundering on this level down here. Let me move to a smaller time frame. You can see it did drop off and then it's bounced back up. So we're almost back to break even on that one. I'm gonna move that stop loss all the way back up here. All right, off of that point. So that's about uh, 40 pips. 26.927 on the Dow, looking for a uh, pullback on this. It has gone from 26.560 roughly to almost 960. That's 400 pips straight up in a matter of uh, about 13 minutes. Huge. So here it seems like we're getting the break that we've been waiting for, and we should see a big drop off. This could come all the way back to 26,570 by the end of the day. I do not think this will be sustained uh, going forward. All right. Do I have any questions at the moment? Anybody on our members channel? So we're there are all- no questions yet. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, there are no questions in the chat box. Yeah. Yeah, so here's, uh, let me go to EJ and look. EJ didn't really have a whole lot of movement, just fluctuating. Uh, Euro USD, let's go back and see what happened with it. It fell off from 1330 uh, area all the way down to 1288. So it fell off about 40 pips, bounced back up, coming back down. All right, so US 30 is coming down as expected. And it may fluctuate here a little bit in this area, but I think this is a very good opportunity for this to sell off. So we're just waiting for a little bit to watch this uh, drop off. And it could drop off a couple hundred pips in a short period of time. We'll probably see that speed up here. So we hit a hit a peak twenty six nine. Uh, 50 something let's see yeah about 956 i believe let's see what happened over here Justin, we have Joseph that has a question. He's asking fake out and stop hunt. What are the differences? What are they and what are the differences? A stop hunt is when they take it beyond the supporter resistance levels. Uh, they run it really fast, 30 to 50 or even 100 pips, and then bring it right back down over the course of 20 or 30 minutes. That's a stop hunt. When they want to take out everybody's stops, 
and bring it right back down. So then when you come back and look, you're out of the trade. It stopped you out, but you would be in profit. A fake out is when they shake it up, they don't necessarily run it so far. They'll start a trend surging it one way slowly or quickly. And it will make you think that the trend is reversing that, you know, it'll pull back a little bit and then it'll go, if we're going up and then it'll start going up a little bit higher then it'll pull back just a little bit and then it'll go up higher and your mindset and psychological uh, viewpoint starts changing to where you think it's going to turn, change directions. And so they'll slowly ease it up, ease it up with little pullbacks along the way, but it, you're thinking it's gaining strength. So that's a fake out and everybody gets out of the trade and gets in on the other side and then boom, the bottom falls out and they drop it really hard, really fast, all the way back to where you would have been nicely in profit. So good question. Yeah. And oil did surge to almost $40. And the U.S. market won't open just yet. It'll open probably around uh, 40 minutes from now, 8.30. We also have another question from Jerome asking, how do you know when and where to get in um, on the market, get in the market? <laughs> Isn't that the, the famous question? Everybody wants to know. My friend. Yeah. Join Global Trading Army and take our basic education classes, and you have to learn the skill set to do it. I can't just give you a basic answer. If it was so easy, everybody would be doing it. You have to learn levels. You have to learn indicators. You have to learn market psychology. You have to learn news, rumors, and trend movement. There's a lot to it that you need to learn to figure out entries and exit, but that, that's one of the big things that people will struggle with. You see where I entered, you know, I've been trading for over 23 years and I entered at 750 or 700 on the first entry and it went to 956, went 256 beyond my entry. I was expecting a surge drop. So I had to close out some of the trades, take a loss on them as it surged higher. When it showed it was coming back down, I entered for the drop right here to try to recover a little bit. And then here on the buy, I entered here expecting the market to go one way. It went the other way. I did put my stop loss way down here. I moved it up. I'm up on this current trade, but I was down for a little while while it moved. So you're not always going to get it right on the entries and exit. You've got to learn how to read and then be patient, not get FOMO, which I do get from time to time as well. All right, so we are seeing a nice drop off. We're back to 26,800 right now, uh, down 156 from the high. So here's my first entry at seven. Actually, that was one of my later entries uh, at 758. So I have entries at 877 and 758. Okay but we're off quite a bit from the initial entry of 26,560 roughly. So we're about to go below 800, but that's pretty much it. I think this will come all the way back down and then we will go even lower. I do not think that this is, you know, we could maybe bounce a little bit back up and then we'll turn and come all the way back down. But I think that we are uh, very close to a, a strong turning point in the market to turn and come back down a big cooling off in the U.S. market because it has surged relentlessly, continually way up here. And I, I do not think that this is sustainable to come all the way back up here because the economy and the numbers do not support it. It does not make sense. 
We have shuttered many businesses. A lot of small businesses have failed. 40 million people out of work. This is an anomaly, not a true scenario. It's called market manipulation. What in the world? Okay. So may get that bounce, but that's where we're at for right now. So we can just wait and you'll see. Uh, I think the US dollar looks like it's gonna have somewhat of a recovery off of the long drop off that we've been having. And it looks like we may turn and head up. So I am going to move my stop loss to break even, right? Maybe inside break even on UCAD so that if it comes back that I won't take a loss on that. And then if it comes way back down here and revisits this bottom then I get in again. On the US 30 expecting this, if it does come up and double top, it'll eventually trail off again. I do not expect that this surge will continue. All right, well, that's all for today. We've gone about uh, almost an hour. So you see the volatility of the market, it can have the power to uh, make a lot of money. If you're on the right side of the trade, you have to be patient. Sometimes you gotta wait for the setups and not be impatient or greedy. Take your time and let the trade come to you and then you will be successful. If you wanna learn how to trade, you wanna learn uh, professional trading strategies, well, come and join us at globaltradingarmy.com and we will teach you how to trade the markets. All right, guys, y'all have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. Stay safe out there and we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye now. Thank you. All right.